Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. If you are a listener of this show, a subscriber, first of all, thank you. Love you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you're not, though, you may be like, why are we talking about what we're talking about today? But for those of you who have been here, this show is not just about business. It's about your mindset, your body, your health, your spirit. And your business. You got to have all of them or else you cannot thrive as a business owner. Believe me, I've neglected all of them and destroyed businesses in the past. So we are here to help your marriage today. But we have a two-part episode. We're really, it's one whole episode. But we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about your marriage as a business owner. And we're also going to peel back the curtain on how our guest has grown her business over the past year and kind of get an inside look of what it looks like to grow a business from scratch. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Let's buckle up and dive in. Lucy Martin, our guest, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. I am. I'm excited to be here because I admittedly, uh, full transparency and vulnerability, nearly destroyed my marriage um, because I owned a business. And I also nearly destroyed my relationship with my kids years ago. And I need some, I need some help, but I also know I'm not alone. I know a lot of people listening are either in that same boat, have been in that same boat, or could be in that boat in the very near future. So uh, before we dive into your business, I, I would really like to unpack, you know, how can we balance business ownership, entrepreneurship, and having a thriving marriage, but based in the most important thing, and that is a biblical marriage from your perspective. So you are, give me, give it to me in your words. You are a marriage coach. How do you describe yourself? Yeah, I'm a marriage coach for, I help born again wives fall in love with their lives, their husbands and Jesus. Um, and, you know, and so I, I really, I can really only speak to the, the women, the woman side of that equation. I I'll think give that you the men's side. So we'll, we'll yeah. tag team this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my theory when men are overworking is often that they feel disrespected at home. And so they go to the place where they feel respected, which is at work and pour themselves in there. So, you know, a lot of times they're kind of getting that feeling of I'm winning um, at work, maybe not so much at home. Um, so that would kind of be my perspective on the, on the men's side of that. How is that? Does that fit your experience or is that too close to home to talk about publicly? <laughs> Ouch, you're attacking me on my show. No, it, it's very <laughs> accurate, but also I, I think it's interesting because not only from my perspective, but also my clients, um, we, we have a, a diverse mix of clients, both men and women. But when I talk to men, our core product is designed to get you 50% of your time back as the business owner within 90 days guaranteed. When I talk to men, the in theory, it sounds good, but they're like, I don't really want to work less. I just maybe want to spend more time on the things I like doing. And we start to, you know, peel back the layers and I'm like, but you don't want to spend more time with like your, your wife and your kids and, and like at home. And they're like, no, not not really. I'm cool. So you're, you're saying exactly the right things from both my perspective and also other people I've talked to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I do think that the natural, you know, like my husband is a like, I'm happy to use myself as an example because I'm an example of like the worst and best case scenarios of this. Like when I um, was showing up, I didn't realize I was being as disrespectful as I was. I was kind of managing him. I have been a single mom. I destroyed my first marriage, 12 years. That's its whole own story. I know now things that would have saved that marriage. But then I took a lot of those bad habits into my second marriage, which is supposed to be completely different because we were both born again. Um, <laughs> But it was reminding me in like many spooky ways in my first marriage. And like my husband, even on Saturday, like he would work a lot. But then also on Saturday morning, he wouldn't even stay home to make a cup of coffee. He would just like fly out the door 
have his cup of coffee at the gas station, just like basically drive around doing like whatever wasn't at home. I would like beg him to take a kid with him and he would be like, no. And now he wants to be around me. I, th I do believe that the natural state of things is that, you know, if things are good, like he wants to be around me. He wants to be around the kids. He's like super playful with the kids. He, play he treats all five of my kids exactly the same. So I have two teenagers from my first marriage and three little boys with, uh, with him. And he treats them all exactly the same. And he like loves on them all so hard and, you know, is like the family man that like every woman dreams of kind of thing. And he, he wants to start his own business. And I think that I've really been able to champion the best in him as far as like in the Bible, the word um, that is often translated as help me, the Hebrew word ever. I really need to learn how to pronounce this if I'm going to talk about it. Ever canadezo. Ever canadezo. Something like that. We're going to put it in the show notes and then you, you watching or listening, you can tell us how to say it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please tell us. Um, but it's usually translated as help me, which a lot of women take as like mother, like pack his lunch, treat him like another one of the kids. No, that is going to just throw water on the fire of marriage. But what it actually means like 65 times in the old Testament, it's used for how the Lord shows up at the last minute for the Israelites and helps them win their battles so it means to champion and so just like even if he's having a rough day like i don't i just stay out of his way if he's having a rough day but like i'm holding the best for him like i'm just i and this is not being a doormat at all it's the opposite i get so much more of what i want but like i am believing for him championing him i'm not like questioning his you know work decisions that kind of thing so because i've like really been doing that consistently since i first found this work that i teach which was about four or five years ago five years in he's like i think i'm gonna start my own contracting business and this is a guy who couldn't make phone calls i'm dead serious he was too socially anxious to make phone calls wow yeah. that's crazy and yeah. I'm, I'm honestly, uh, I'm a little excited for the, uh, the comments we're going to get on all of the shorts uh -huh. that come from this yeah. episode and the episode in general, um, because a, a biblical marriage is not popular and these right. topics you're talking about is not popular, but mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. And the, the references between, um, a, a woman mm -hmm. and the Lord in the Bible the, the wording used is very similar in many cases, which I, I don't think people, you've obviously picked up on it and you described it, but it's not to be a doormat. And, and like you said, and just just lay there and let your husband walk all over you. There, there's so many similarities between, um, you know, what, what the Lord does for us and what a how a woman should build up her husband. And also yeah. vice versa, I think we should be building up our wives too. But so yeah. I'm curious to kind of unpack this and, um, what are some of the ways that whether you you are the business owner as a woman or your husband is a business owner, what are some of the ways that you help your clients understand what it means to be a biblical wife in order to not only support your husband, but to, to save and revive, in some cases, your marriage? Yeah. Well, the first step is actually completely on. So a lot of it is really about her like falling in love with their own life. So looking less to her husband to like make her happy. And like, I just released a podcast episode about this where I was speaking uh, to, I, I was something that I, a message I had given to a live audience, but then I also gave it to my podcast that was about um, like how again and again um, throughout the Bible, God has all these stories of like women just staying in their own power doing their best like from their side and how that brings blessing to their whole family like a, a lot of women use the Proverbs 31 woman against themselves but to me like she's such an encouragement because it's not about like being exactly like her and like copying what she does it's more like she has found like her happy place like her way of adding value to her family and you know, she's working, she's bringing all these things, like her gifts forward, like whatever's inside of her, she's bringing fully out. 
And um, so she like a lot where I actually start with women is getting in touch with like what brings them delay. What do they want? Like what are their desires, the desires of their heart? And as they, you know, start to honor those things, do those things, express those things, they get like the relaxed smile on their face sudden our husbands kind of want to be around them more because they're just like a more inviting presence than when they were like stressed out and overwhelmed. And then they start to say, you know, he's like, what should we do about the cell phone plan? And she says, whatever you think. And he's like, no, really? Like, I need you to tell me what to do. And she's like, because he's used to like her making the decisions. And she's just like, I trust you to do what's best for your family. So just a lot more like, it it right it lightens my load when I show up that way because I have so much less to worry about. Like if there's anything that's kind of in the realm that he could just handle it without my input, I don't need to like weigh in on all those little things. Mm, yeah, that's that's I could see how that would feel like uh, a bit of manipulation maybe at first for some people going from where maybe the wife is. Uh, involved like you said and then just immediately whatever you think is good like that feels like a trap a little bit so how do we how do we walk through that gap and have it be like no it's it's supportive it's just letting you lead that kind of thing versus because if we're if we're trying to do this single-handedly you said you only work with women the husband's not involved this is going to feel like a shock so how do you navigate that that's really fun to see <laughs> husband's faces when their wife says whatever you think they're like <laughs> like in the middle of, so I, I got inspired to do this by reading the book, The Surrendered Wife by Laura Doyle. So I do want to shout her out, give her credit. Um, and then I trained with her and like my business is based on her work, bringing her work to born and Christians who need it. And like the Lord wants them to have this information because it's really great information on how to live out what he says on scripture. And so when I was in the middle of reading that book, it's like relinquish control of the finances and so in the middle of reading the book, which like not most, this was like, I was waiting for this book because I was like, what is going on with me in marriage? And so, and every single page I was like, oh my gosh, somebody finally handed me the cheat sheet of what is going on. So I was just like, so ready for the information. Um, but like, it's not a manipulation at all to just admit that something's not working. Like that's been my experience and my clients experience as well. Like it's not working for women to try to run everything, like even things that they don't need to run. And then they're like, oh, I'm such a victim. I'm the default parent, which is like such a viral thing right now. Like, oh, I'm the default parent. It's like, yeah, that's on you. You don't need to be the default parent. Just like let him lead and you won't be the default parent anymore. <laughs> magic right it's a magic yeah, it's like woof. and yeah. the bible says like throughout the new testament that we men can be won over without a word hmm. like without a word and that it says if the first peter 3 says if they're not living in alignment like if men aren't living in alignment with the word of god they can be won over without a word by the godly behavior of their wives hmm. It's because we're such simple creatures. Yes. <laughs> yes. I that joke, but it's true. That is true. And like men love to solve problems, right? And they get a bad rap for that. Now, the thing is like, because like, like women are always like, I wish he would just listen to me kind of thing. Like this, these are generalizations, of course, but like they're also have a, I think most people know what I'm talking about. So, um, I love to let Jesse solve my problems. When I want just a listening ear, empathy, someone to hold space for me, I talk to girls. Like I have a lot of women friends. Like I surround myself with women. I spend most of my time talking to women. If I have a problem that I would like solved, I talk to my 17 year old son or my husband and they're like to the rescue solving my problem for me. Uh, I, I can't relate to that. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. We need to just put that out there. Uh, women, if you need someone to listen, it's not your husband. Or yeah. you need to be yeah. warned in advance. Like, shut up and listen. <laughs> that has saved so many arguments in, in our marriage uh, and, and made me... The whole point of this episode is how do you become a better business owner, male or female? Like, you need to have a good marriage. You need to have that whole picture. Like I said in the beginning... 
mind, body, business, spirit, everything needs to be working together. If you're at conflict with your, your closest partner, your husband, or your wife, impossible to have a thriving business. So I, I love this episode from that aspect. And I think there's, there's probably a million aspects of, of a biblical marriage we can unpack here. And we don't have time for all of that because this is a bite-sized episode. So here's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to pause the episode in the middle here. I'm going to put your website, Lucy, on the screen as we keep talking about your business. If you want to unpack this, you want to have an easy biblical marriage, you go to easybiblicalmarriage.com, wherever you're watching or listening. It's going to be in the show notes down below. Um, You can actually check out Lucy's Facebook group, too, for women and possibly become a client of hers to improve your own marriage. But now I want to talk about your business because I'm always curious about how people are growing their businesses, having success and the journey along the way. So you started this business, the coaching business about a year ago at the time of this recording. Yes. And I just want to hear, you know, the, the path, it, this is a tough niche to be in because it's not socially popular, if you will. Sure. Yeah. So I want to, I want to kind of hear, you know, where, what got you into this in the first place and into coaching in this capacity? Yeah. Well, it was really like a call. Um, I, I was, um, actually really excited to be a stay at home mom. I homeschool my kids and I was feeling very content in that place. I, in reflecting, I think the Lord needed me in a content place. When I first started my business, I was actually called the contentment studio. And then, you know, I recognized that that didn't give people enough information about what I do. So I went to the easy biblical marriage or just communicate so much in three words, Um, But when I started, um, I have a pastor that's very, very practical, like everything that he preaches, like, it's just, he's so popular because everything that he preaches is so uh, usable, like just, it's like, you can just go home and use it. Um, And so he was preaching those messages um, back in November of like 2022, I just started to feel this real pull, like, as if somebody, you know, as if... um, like it was very undeniable um, that he was pushing me in a certain direction. I was really confused because I was really content to be a stay at home mom. I was like, you know, Jesse had really offered me that possibility of, you know, just being supported. And I was like happy to receive that and um, really had all my life wanted to be a homeschooling mom, but never thought I had the personality for it. But like through this work have developed that personality where I am able to enjoy it most days, (laughs) not perfectly, but really have found that like, you know, that contentment. And so I was surprised and I am a licensed therapist. So when I, when I left the workforce, when my fifth child was born, um, 18 months ago, it was, I was left, I left, um, working for a therapy app. And, um, so I, you know, that was what working meant to me was like something I had really put a lot of time and money into getting like really highly qualified to do. But the, the picture that I was kind of given when I felt this calling was really different. It was like to, to deliver this coaching and really to have the freedom to speak the truth, like you've called out, like to really, you know, certainly in a way that I would never be able to do as a therapist, it's too controversial. I think even as a Christian therapist, I think it would be difficult. Um, There's also an expectation as a therapist that you don't self-disclose, which is very different than um, with coaching, um, especially as a marriage coach, there's a lot of vulnerability, a lot of self-disclosure, like on my podcast, um, Easy Biblical Marriage is also the name of my podcast. I um, tell my own story very vulnerably. And so it's really big. It's like a 180. And it's also a much more, um, there's just such a different possibility as it, well, it's, it is an entrepreneurial thing, which I there may be therapists that look at their work that way, but I don't personally know any, like that's not really the norm for therapists to look at their work that way as, as entrepreneurs or, you know, the ceiling of where you can take a business as a coach is just like the sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get that. And, and I, I say pretty mean things about therapists in general, but I, I, (laughs) we don't have any listening to this show, which is okay. But so what I don't like about it is 
they're they're there to just really listen and prolong the issue that I found. Yes. And I, I'm not about that. Like not wanna... all therapists are like that, but there's that I would say that True. that's an accurate generalization. Yeah. Very fair. Um, yeah. And as you've described, I'm I'm a man. I want to solve a problem. I don't want to sit here and talk about it. I want to solve the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I would make a terrible therapist, uh, yeah. as I've already pointed out. So I like the I like that you went into coaching and you recognize that in yourself too. Um, so then I'm curious. You know, you you started this journey. You're now well into it. You have clients. You're growing your business. Yeah. What What are some of those things that you you learned over the past year, or maybe wish you learned sooner? What were some yeah. of those hurdles you overcame? I, um, I really wish that, so I was just like, wanted to go right to group because I wanted women to like, feel the support of having each other. And I, I was like, I'm going to start a membership. And you know, everyone's like, Oh, that's so amazing. Well, it's not amazing. So I, I wound up having to scrap my membership because I, you know, of all the reasons that all the people say, but I just wasn't listening to all the people. It was like, I wanted to do the end at the beginning. Like I still would like to have a group program, you know, once I've reached certain business milestones that I've, you know, once I basically need to scale. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's something I wish I had known. And then a lot of just, um, I just did not realize like how mindset intensive it was going to be. Um, like I write out my like thoughts every morning, like basically just to keep myself willing to show up so vulnerably in face of like, I get pushed back from Christians, I get pushed back from secular people. Like, um, like I get all the pushback. But then I also just have like, basically a movement or a try or whatever you want to call it, like a, a, a circle of women around me that like deeply understand what I'm doing and are really encouraging me. Um, and like, I just spoke at my church, um, recently. And so I feel that like from my church that they understand me too. So that, that was really a huge step forward. And I wanted to do that first. My church wasn't ready for it at first. And so it, it that's been a journey of just me learning how to represent what I'm doing in a way that like, I don't want to, um, I want to tell the truth in love. I don't want to, um, make it any harder than it needs to be. So I'm not going to focus on the any kind of polarization or discord. I'm going to focus on like, this is like on serving like one woman at a time. Like that's really how, what I've had to keep bringing myself back to. Like one, like uh, I got this from Stacey Bayman, but like one woman at a time in love from service, from knowing. And yeah, so that's the way I try to tackle it. Yeah, that makes sense. And and it's uh it's interesting because we all want to serve as many people as possible because we're passionate about what we do, right? It's not I, I don't I don't sense that it's coming from a place of greed that you started a membership and a group program. No. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's tough. It's tough to grow that. And there's there's yeah. no shame in that. Um, full transparency, we did the same thing and we completely yeah. shifted because it was, yeah, putting the end first and yes. it's it's hard to it's hard to get people into that kind of a, a membership and, and a group because there's no, there's no defined outcome, if you will. So that's, right. that's at least something we learned. I don't know. I don't know about yourself, but we completely shifted our project or our process and our products to get a defined outcome in a short period of time. And then we have a membership on the back end, and it's been phenomenal for us. It sounds like you do a very similar process. Yeah, I do a six month one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. um, process. And then I don't even worry about telling people that I have a course and a, I have a Facebook group that's just for my paid clients, but I usually don't even mention it until people say yes. And then they're just delighted. Yeah. It's like those bonus things, right? That we think <laughs> yeah. are so important. It's like, Oh, even better. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Just because I found that I would get overwhelmed unless I was just, and overwhelm my audience when I wasn't just focusing on one simple offer. Yeah. No, this is, this is so great. And I'm curious, you know, you, you work with, you work with women. Um, the, the benefits are very clear for me of what you get on the, on the backside of this. But I think if someone maybe in your situation, when you started this journey, what is, what does that look like? Like who is the person that should reach out to you if they want to take on this journey and improve their marriage, improve their business, their husband's business because of having a stronger, more united marriage, who, who should reach out? Anyone who wants to feel like they're on the same team 
with their husband. I mean, I honestly, most of my clients, their their husband is bringing something to the table that is really challenging. So maybe he's an alcoholic, he's not a believer, you know, wants to swing or, you know, something that's really tough. Um, so, you know, but that saddens me because I really feel like anyone who wants to feel on the same team with their spouse, like that really is the end result. And I, you know, like women don't necessarily want like the dream marriage that you might think that they want. Like when I hear women talk about their vision, which is something I ask women, like every time I talk to them, they're they pretty much all say they just want to feel like they're on the same team pulling the same direction. And that's so key as a business owner. And like, I, as I, you know, we're going to be a dual entrepreneur family and we really in a way already are because Jesse's already a self-employed fisherman and like, it's going to do a contract business on the side. Then we're going to have three businesses. Um, and that's po only possible, like, because we're on the same team, like, because like, and if I'm facing something, you know, in my business, I, I am always asking him for his perspective. His perspective is so different than mine so it's always like even if i i don't like always like you know bow down and do exactly what he says like that's not what i'm saying at all but i just always value his perspective for sure and it, it always changes my perspective that's such a great way to describe it though is you know that's the secret of this show let's just let the audience have it the word above my head if you're watching harmonious yes if things are not in harmony they yeah. are by default in dissonance. And when you right. are not on the same team, when you're not rowing in the same direction, whether that's your business, your mindset, your marriage, your health, it falls apart. Yes. That's why we're here. That's why I put on these episodes every single day of the week. Yeah. And Lucy, that's why I have amazing guests like you. Thank you for coming. This is a fantastic yeah. episode. Yeah, this is wonderful. I love this. Can I leave them with one last thought about the uh, No, you have to pay extra for that. <laughs> Yes, please. What do you got? You can turn it around in one second. Like the like what you were just saying about the harmonious. Like I would say that marriages are in a vicious cycle or a virtuous cycle, but that it can turn around in one second. And a way you can turn it around is with gratitude. Just mm -hmm. like thank you, honey, for going to work every day. That's beautiful. If you want to turn around in one second, do that. In two seconds, you go to easybiblicalmarriage.com and you yeah. figure out how to take the next step and actually how to have an easy, prosperous, harmonious, if I may put that on you, marriage. Um, so thank you again for coming. This has been awesome. For you watching, yeah. listening, wherever you are, first of all, thank you. We love having you. Make sure you subscribe, though. And for those of you who have put hate comments down below, because that's what you do, we love you too, and we will continue to put on this ridiculous show, the bite-sized business advice you need to grow your business every single day of the week. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious Alliance.